In this video, we're going to look at how to gain access to files on the OPZ from a computer. This is often called disk mode, and TE calls it content mode. This feature allows you the ability to back up all your files on the unit, download and upload samples, and install a firmware update. For this, we'll need a computer and the supplied USB to USB-C cable. Note, we'll be using a Mac for this example, but you should have the same results on a PC. So let's get started. In the official Teenage Engineering Guide for the OPZ, they first mention placing the OPZ in content mode prior to connecting the USB cable. To do this, first make sure that the unit is off. Press and hold track and then turn on the OPZ. You should see a row of green lights on the sequencer buttons. Now, connect the USB cable to the unit and the other end to your computer. You should now see the drive show up on your computer labeled OPZ. This is important for PC users. You need to follow this order of operations if you're connecting to a Windows OS. Now, on a Mac, it's less picky about going into content mode first before connecting the USB cable. It's okay to connect the USB cable first, then enter content mode. With the OPZ off, connect the USB cable. Then press and hold track and turn on the OPZ. The OPZ should now show up on the computer as a drive. Now that we have access to the files on the OPZ, we can do a number of things from here. So before we make any changes to these files, let's make a backup of the OPZ. Note, the total capacity of the OPZ is 36 megabytes, so backing up the unit won't take up too much space. I have a 1 gigabyte USB drive here, and I'll back up the OPZ to this. Let's create a folder on it called OPZ, and a folder within that folder called Backups. Then create a folder with today's date. Back on our OPZ, select all the files and folders in the OPZ's root directory. Then copy and paste them into the backup folder we just created. Once they've been copied, we can now make changes to the OPZ. Let's take a look at how the files are arranged on the OPZ. We can see a few folders in the root directory. A couple of folders worth noting are the Bounces folder, which contains exported AIFF files, the Projects folder, which contains our song files, and the Sample Packs folder, which contains all the sounds on the device. Inside the Sample Packs folder, we have the track folders which are numbered and labeled to correspond with each respective track. Tracks 1 through 4 use the drum sample engine, and tracks 5 through 8 use the synth sample engine. If we go into one of these folders, we see a list of folders numbered 0 through 9. These correspond to the presets or plugs within each track. If we go into one of these folders, we can see a single AIFF file. So if we wanted to download upload or delete any of these preset sample files, we could do that now. So this is a good time to point out that in the drum sample preset, there is only one audio file per preset, even though there are several sounds per preset. That's because the OPZ, like the OP1 and the PO33, detect the transients and divide the sounds in software. So let's combine some of these concepts. Here we have the OP1 drum utility tool. This is a free piece of software that combines drum samples for use on the OPZ and OP1. We can load it full of samples in the order we want. Both the OP1 and the OPZ have a time limit of 12 seconds for their drum samplers, respectively. In the utility tool, we can see the amount of time remaining, and we can keep loading samples until we hit our time limit. Then we export a singular AIFF file. Let's save that somewhere where it's convenient, like on our one gigabyte USB drive in a drum samples folder. Now copy the file. Now back in our OPZ, let's go to the sample track, which here is labeled FX track and it's track number four. We can then scroll through the folder until we find an empty one or we can delete one of these user sample packs. Control click the file, move it to the trash, and emptying the trash will permanently delete it from the device. Now paste the AIFF file that we made using the drum utility tool in this folder. You can do this as many times as you like filling up the whole machine. Just remember that you can only have one AIFF file in each of the 10 preset folders in the four drum tracks. Let's speak briefly about the synth tracks. If we go back into our sample packs folder, we can see tracks 5 through 8 listed. And if we select one of them, we can see the same 10 folder layout representing the presets on this track. If we go into one of those folders, we can see something a little different. This is not an AIFF file, but a synth engine file. Unlike the drum tracks, which all rely on AIFF files, synth tracks can have both synth engines as well as use AIFF files. Here we can see a sample that we recorded on the OPZ which became a user sample pack. But we can also drop an AIFF file here to use with the synth sample engine. Again, just make sure there's only one file per preset folder. Now let's say we're done working on the OPZ. Eject the OPZ on the computer. The OPZ will reset and then the lights will change back into normal mode. If the USB cord is still connected, it will continue to charge the OPZ's battery. 
All right, folks, that wraps up this video. Before you go, give a like and subscribe to support the channel. It really helps. And drop a comment below if you enjoyed the video and learned something. And for extra credit, leave a comment below with your favorite Wu-Tang Clan member and why they're your favorite. And bonus points if you can guess ours. Thanks.